Hallelujah, people of God, welcome, welcome. The right hand of God is power and God is supporting our position. Good morning and win forever. We know that we are the spiritual governors, the Elijah generations, firebrands in this season, in our generation, to bring the kingdom of heaven down to the earth and impose the will of God to our generation. May God bless you. We are going to pray. Mighty God, we thank you today for your love, for your mercy, for your goodness, for your kindness. We thank you because without you, it would be nothing, but you have called us to something bigger than ourselves, to be partakers with you, to be co-heirs with Christ. We thank you because we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places, and certainly this is a day of rejoicing. We decree this is our day of victory. It is a day of joy. It is a day of grace. And we thank God for his goodness in our lives. In this new year, 2022, God bless you. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Today we are going to go into the word. And I, I feel as we are into the month of January, 2022, we have entered a new season, a new year. And the Lord is yet to give me the theme for this year. I have received a couple of indications. But before I actually specifically publicly announce it, I am still spending some time with that word. But I want to tell you that we are going to be into the book of Mark. You see? Sometimes we can share a word according to a theme or title, but today we are going to go by chapters. We are going to start in the, in the book of Mark, chapter 2, all the way to chapter 5. And we might not be able to do the three, chap three or four chapters, but we are going to do a section of it and continue next time if we are not able to finish it today. Glory to God. In the book of Mark, chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, there are some segments I need to emphasize. We are going to read some segments and share the revelation, the nuggets of wisdom that the Lord has deposited in our spirits as we're reading this word. Holy Spirit, thank you. I pray that I will just be a vessel and that you will be the one doing the talking. Take over, take control of my tongue, of my thoughts, of my mind, of my brain, of my heart. Lord, I pray, oh God, forgive me all my sins. Cleanse me of anything that would be a blockage or a hindrance for the word to flow. And I pray let the word flow freely to your people this very day in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. In the book of Mark, chapter number 2, verse 1 to 4, we are reading. And again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he, Jesus, was in the house. Immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. Glory to God. We thank God for this precious word. In Mark 2, 1 to 4, there is a short story of Jesus forgiving and healing a paralytic. Glory to Jesus. I want to go further into the story. Verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. 
answer, verse 12. Hallelujah. Mighty God, we thank you for the revelations in your word. We thank you, Lord, for the spirit word. The word is spirit. Your words are life and they are spirit. As we read this word, we know that the scriptures already have been releasing life into the hearers. And the Spirit of God is ministering right now to the hearts of those who are hungry, to the hearts of, to the hearts of those who are connected to this moment. Mighty God, we thank you for this holy moment. We thank you, Lord, for the grace and the privilege to be used by you for you and for your people. Lord, we want to say we are more than conquerors through Christ. We thank you that the word that is being sold right now is entering every heart connected and every ear that is listening in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the, the incorruptible word of God that is being released right now is going to minister in the hearts of those who are listening for change in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So as we read this story, I want to get back to it. Jesus entered the city of Capernaum after some days. It was heard that he was in the house. It seems to be a house that he visited before because they didn't see in a house, but in the house. It is a house where he used to stop from time to time, apparently, and I want to let you know that what a joy and a pleasure to be a house that uh, receives people of God, that receives ministers of God, a house that accommodates the preaching of the gospel. Will you be able to do that with your house? Can you, even in this season of the pandemic, open your house for uh, connect groups, for cell groups, for fellowships, home fellowship groups, for a church? Do you know that when you open your house for a home cell or a home fellowship groups, a church fellowship, when you open your house for a church to gather and hold services, do you know that when you do such a thing that you are actually welcoming the ark of the covenant into your house? Hallelujah. There is a special blessing that can be released in your house as you do so. Great things will begin to happen because you are housing the anointing, the glory of the Lord in that place. Certainly, problems in your house will begin to be solved. The Bible talks in the Old Testament of a man called Obededom who welcomed the Ark of the Covenant in his house for a season. He housed it. And the Bible says that during the time the Ark of the Covenant that God had given to the Israelites was in that man's house. Everything in his house began to prosper. Hallelujah. He did not have to go and pray and fast for days, but the presence of God, represented by that ark, the covenant of the living covenant of God was in his house. And great things begin to unravel and doors began to open and everything in his house began to prosper. This is one of the secrets. You want to know in this new year of 2022, we are speaking since the beginning of the year. The Lord has been speaking to me about prosperity, a year to prosper. It is a year of great prosperity for the church. For those who have ears to hear, suddenly they will be able to see great manifestation of wealth being released into their hands. And one of the answers, one of the ways that the Lord will release a blessing in the houses of those who have been struggling, chronic problems that have not been solved, open your house for the church, open your house for the gospel, glory to God. The Bible does not give us the name of the owner of that house, but I can guarantee you that that man, that owner, was blessed. This family was tremendously blessed because they opened the house to the King of Kings, the Lord Jesus, to use it for the kingdom. Remember, every person that allowed Jesus to use them, who gave up their goods, of their properties for Jesus to use, were tremendously blessed. The young boy that gave his two fish and five bread, or two bread and five fish, whichever way, ended up with 12 baskets full of bread and fish, full of loaves of bread. Remember, Peter lent his boat to Jesus for preaching, and after that, a boatload of fish was collected from the sea, where there was previously nothing 
They were not able to catch anything, no catch whatsoever. So the presence of Jesus and Jesus using your goods, your materials, your possessions will always cause a blessing, an anointing to be released in your life. Glory to God. We are going to verse 2. The Bible says that immediately when people heard that he was in that particular house, that he was in the city of Capernaum, immediately many gathered together. When Jesus is in a house, when Jesus is in a service, when Jesus has orchestra, is in a conference, in a revival, in a crusade, in an outreach, people begin to gather together. Glory to God. It doesn't take so much marketing. It doesn't take so much viral uh, uh, sending to all the social media platforms. But people will meet, begin to gather together. This is a message for you, my brother, my sister, my colleague in the service of God as a minister. It is not so much about distributing flyers. But bring, let bring Jesus into the scene. When Jesus comes into the scene, many will gather together for that particular event you are organizing. And they gather together so much so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. There was an overflow. Glory to God. You see, overflow. And I know this is what you are looking in this season. You have a business. And you need clients, you need traffic, you need people to come in, bring Jesus into the scene. You have a church and you've been serving God in that church and the church has not been growing much, but you need to bring Jesus into the scene. When the focus is on Jesus, when you allow Jesus to operate in your life and to visit your home, to visit your church, to visit your business, holding times of fellowship, Times of refreshing into your business, in your workplace, in your house, in your family. Certainly when Jesus comes into the scene, many will begin to gather together to come and see what the Lord is doing. And I decree an overflow in your house as you begin to allow your house to be used, your business, your company, your church to be used to hold Jesus, to hold the word of God, to hold prayer services, worship crusades, and events that glorifies the Lord. And he preached the word to them. When you make your house, your business, your company, your church available for the word to be preached, for a preacher that comes from afar to come and preach in your church, what happens is, because you have allowed, you have given room for activity, of the word of God according to G to God's plan what happens is people will come and there will be an overflow in Jesus name then they came to him people came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men four men came in and they were carrying a paralytic but they could not come here near because the crowd so they uncovered the roof where Jesus was glory to God this tells you that when they came to the house and it was an overflow. There were people. The house was crowded. And nowhere to come to the door. And the project said, well, friends, I think it's never going to happen. There is no way that we can enter this place and see Jesus. But the four men refused. And they persisted. They said, we're going to get you to see that Jesus. Today, you are coming out of that bed. You are coming out of that stretcher. And I speak to you who is watching us right now. Today, you are coming out of that situation. You are coming out of that slavery, of that abusive home. You are coming out of, the, of, that, of that evil situation. Or that evil workplace. You are coming out of whatever you have entangled yourself into, of that evil, really ungodly relationship you have entangled yourself with, you are coming out in Jesus' mighty name. So when they could not near him, they, they decided, they looked for a way when there was no way. And they went on top of the roof. They climbed up on the roof of, of, the, of that house. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And they uncovered the roof. They didn't destroy the roof. They just uncovered it. And then they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. Glory to God. I want to let you know that the revelation that the Lord has given me is that the four men represent 
intercessors in your life, do you have anyone interceding regularly for you? As a Christian, do you know that you need people that are supporting you in prayer? You have your church, you have your pastor praying for you, but I want to encourage you in this season, not only of the pandemic, but in the last days, it will be very beneficial for each one of us to recruit and enlist four people that will begin to pray for you on a regular basis. And as you allow these people to pray through for you, they will break through. When the door is locked, there's no way in. Through their prayers, they will uncover the roof and they will be the Lord will break through for you. The, the Lord will make a way for you where there is no way and you will come into the presence of your miracle worker. The miracle will happen and Jesus will intervene in your case. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Son, your sins are forgiven you. I want to let you know that Jesus is the model, second Adam, the nature of the reborn, the re first reborn among many brethren. And we are called to do exactly what he said. He said to him, your sins are forgiven you. And then he said, take up your bed and go to your house. And I want to let you know today that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the authority invested in me, I want to let you know that the Lord is forgiving your sins right now. The Lord is forgiving you. Repent of your sins right now. And as you are repenting and I pray, Lord, let your, your sins are forgiven. Brother, my sister, your sins are forgiven. Now take up your bed and go. Take up your bed out of that house of bondage, out of the house of slavery, and go. Go back. Go and serve the Lord. Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go, that they may serve me, says the Lord. Today, you are coming out of the house of bondage. You are coming out of that bed of sickness. You are coming out of that prison. You are coming out of whatever situation you've entangled yourself with. You are coming out of prostitution. You are coming out of homosexuality, lesbianism. You are coming out of everything. You are coming out of drug addiction. In the name of Jesus, be set free. May the Lord intervene right now. I decree over you, the right hand of God is power. And certainly God is supporting your position in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you are blessed today with this word. We are going to stop here for this particular word. And I want to let you know that next time we are going to speak about Mark 3. Mark 3, we're going to talk about the story of, that is in verse 23. How can Satan cast out Satan? Be ready until we meet tomorrow. Bye-bye.